What are some examples of postmodern art? Many postmodern art movements are described as neo movements. Because they respond to earlier modern styles or approaches. Here is a sampling. Neo expressionism. Neo expressionism is primarily focused on painting. Though 252 some sculpture is considered neo expressionist, and first began in Germany in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Neo expressionist paintings are usually vibrant sometimes figurative, but often raw and self-aware. Neo-expressionist artists include Anselm Kiefer, 1945, from Germany, and the American Julian Schnabel, 1951, whose large, brash paintings have been highly financially successful. Neo-geo neo-geometric conceptualism, or neo-geo. Developed in New York City in the mid 1980s and is characterized by postmodern appropriation and a strong sense of irony. Artists associated with Neo Geo include Peter Halley, 1953, and Ross Blecker, 1949, who brought new symbolic meaning to familiar modernist forms. Artists such as Ashley Bickerton. 1959, and Jeff Koons, 1955, are Neo Geo artists more interested in consumer culture. And their art is sometimes also categorized as post pop. Neo pop Neo pop is another term for post pop. An art movement that developed under the influence of pop art in the 1980s. Neo pop artists include Heim Steinbach, 1944, Alan McCollum, 1949, Jeff Koons, 1955, Ashley Bickerton, 1959, and Takashi Murakami, 1961. Neo pop artists frequently use pre existing, everyday objects also known as ready-mades, in their work and question the values of mainstream culture. Who is Mariko Mori? Mariko Mori, 1967 is a contemporary Japanese artist whose work includes videos, photographs, and installations, such as Tom N. A. Hugh, 2006, a high-tech, monolithic structure whose light changes and blinks as it reacts to information recorded by the Super Cameo Konda Neutrino Observatory in Tokyo. Mori's work is often influenced by technology and Buddhism. Who is Bill Viola? Bill Viola, 1951 is a contemporary video and sound artist known for exploring the role of technology in his work and his video and audio. One of his most well-known and emotionally powerful pieces is Heaven and Earth. 1992, a sculptural installation in which two video monitors face one another. One monitor displays a scene of the artist's mother on her deathbed while the other screen plays a scene of his nearly newborn son, juxtaposing the beginning of life with the end. 
Because of the highly reflective surface of the screens, the death and birth scenes merge into one. Viola's larger installations can create a completely immersive environment. Through video and audio projection making the viewer a part of the art. Viola's 1976 work, He Weeps For You, used video to allow gallery visitors to see. And here, themselves reflected in a water droplet that slowly falls from a brass valve. An image that was magnified on a large screen. What is performance art? Performance art is slightly more complicated than its name might suggest. Performance art is indeed art that blends music, theatrical performance, and visual art, rather than a single painting or sculpture. But, the form itself, which became more popular in the 1960s, also blurs the line between art and artist, and frequently produces an uncomfortable reaction amongst viewers. For example, the artists Gilbert and George sing for over eight hours in their performance. The Singing Sculpture, 1969 In a performance piece titled How to Explain Pictures to a Dead Hair, 1968 the often provocative artist Joseph Buies holds a dead hair in his arms while appearing to whisper to it. A good example of the way in which both art and artist merge is Yoko Ono's 1964 performance. Cut piece, in which audience participants are invited to cut off pieces of Ono's clothing until none remain. This performance is also categorized as an example of Fluxus art. What is sound art? Also known as audio art, sound art developed in the late 1970s. Though artists and musicians had been experimenting with sound and electronic music for decades prior. Sound art, like video art, is a medium rather than a style. And features many different types of sounds from natural to man-made. The Italian artist Luigi Russolo, 1883-1947, wrote a manifesto titled The Art of Noises in 1913. Using new musical instruments as well as music comprised of noise sounds. Also in 1913, Dada artist Marcel Duchamp created the Aratum musical and later. Yves Klein wrote the Monotone Symphony, 1947, which was composed of only one note. There are a number of sound artists, and visual artists who incorporate sound, working today. Including the British artist Brian Eno, 1948, who collaborated with the artist Peter Schmidt. To create an artwork called Oblique Strategies, Over 100 Worthwhile Dilemmas, 1975. Oblique Strategies is a set of cards designed to assist in solving difficult dilemmas that arise during life and creative work, such as writing a musical composition. Sound art is still in its infancy. And new audio and digital technology continues to develop and impact the medium.
What movies have been made about famous artists? Artists have been inspiring films for decades. The following is a short list of movies either about or inspired by artists. Exit through the gift shop. 2010, an intriguing documentary about the enigmatic street artist Banksy. Little Ashes. 2008, Robert Pattinson plays Salvador Dali in a film about the artist's relationships with filmmaker Luis Bunuel. And writer Federico Garcia Lorca. Factory Girl, 2006. A dramatic look at Edie Sedgwick's relationship with Andy Warhol. Klimt. 2006, John Malkovich plays the Austrian artist Gustav Klimt. Maudie Leone, 2004. A dramatic romance that focuses on the rivalry between artists Maudie Leone and Picasso in Paris. The Girl with the Pearl Earring, 2003. A film inspired by a novel by Tracy Chevalier that was in turn inspired by the famous painting by Jan Vermeer. Frida. 2002, Salma Hayek and Alfred Molina star as Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Respectively. Pollock, 2000. Starring Ed Harris as abstract expressionist painter Jackson Pollock. Marcia Gay Harden won the Academy Award for her portrayal of Lee Krasna. Goya in Bordeaux. 1999 a dramatic Spanish-language film about the artist Francisco de Goya. Surviving Picasso. 1996, Anthony Hopkins stars as Pablo Picasso in this film about the women in his life. Basquiat. 1996, a biopic of the postmodernist artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. I shot Andy Warhol. 1996, Lily Taylor stars as Valerie Solanese, who shot Andy Warhol in 1968. Vincent and Theo, 1990. Robert Altman directs this film about the relationship between brothers Vincent and Theo Van Gogh. Camille Claudel. 1988, a French film about sculptor Camille Claudel and her relationship with Auguste Rodin. Aubrey, 1986. Donald Sutherland plays French artist Paul Gauguin. Who is A.I. Weiwei? A.I. Weiwei. 1957, is a Chinese contemporary artist and political activist known for working in a variety of media, including painting, sculpture, and installations. Wei Wei, who has shown his work internationally, was arrested by Chinese police in 2011 and detained for tax evasion, and has since not been allowed to leave the country or speak. Publicly about his arrest. A.I. Weiwei's work is often political, contemplative, and humorous. Many of his works, such as his Colored Vases, 2006, series, evoke a sense of emptiness. What is video art? while artists such as Andy Warhol had experimented with film and video recordings. 
Video art was born in 1965 when Fluxus artist Nam June Paik filmed the streets of New York City with his brand new Sony portable video camera and showed the videos mere hours later at a cafe. Video art, which is a medium, not a style, in the way that oil painting is a medium. Represents a transition from mass media influence to television influence. Video art can take many forms, from use in sculpture and installations. To performances and videos can be broadcast live or recorded and displayed in various settings. In 1996, Douglas Gordon won the British Turner Prize for his video work 24 Hour Psycho, 1996. Contemporary video artists include Bill Viola, 1951, Matthew Barney, 1967. Creator of the Cremaster film series, and Canadian Stan Douglas, 1960, among many others. What is installation art? Installation art is art that is more than three-dimensional it creates a complete environment. Entire gallery spaces can be devoted to a single installation, usually but not always temporarily. Installation art became popular in the 1970s and continues to be an important art form today. Installations rely upon the interactions of the viewer slash participant and can even be collected. Which means they are not necessarily site specific. Yves Klein created one of the first installations with his work The Void in 1958. For this work, Klein presented a completely empty, white walled gallery. Other famous examples of installation art include British sculptor Rachel Whitehead's Embankment. 2005, which she created for the Turbine Hall at the Tate Modern Museum in London. The piece consisted of tower-like mountains made of thousands of white, plaster casts of boxes. Visitors to the gallery were able to move through the installation allowing them to engage with a monumental art form on an intimate level. Can a video game be a work of art? All works of art, but perhaps most obviously installation art rely upon the participation of viewer to generate meaning. When you go to a gallery and look the art, your thoughts and experiences affect the meaning of the art you see and interpret. This exchange is naturally extended to the concept of game play and video games. Game theory and game art have been a fruitful source of artistic exploration for years. In 2001, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art exhibited Game Show. And in 2012 the Smithsonian American Art Museum held a show called, The Art of Video Games. The show's curator, Chris Melisinos, explained that through the video game medium. We are invited by the artist to inject our own morality, our own worldview, our own experiences into the game as we play it. And what comes out is wholly different from everybody that experiences it, the art of video games. Like other forms of digital art, video game art is very young. 
and generations of innovative artists will likely mine the medium for its theoretical and aesthetic potential in the years to come. Who is Yinka Shoni Bear, MBE? Yinka Shona Bear, 1962, is a British Nigerian artist whose work takes many forms, including video, photography, installation, and performance. Some of his most well known work questions racial identity and relationships between cultures in a post colonial world. His sculptural work, Scramble for Africa, 2003. Depicts headless European leaders dressed in European style clothes made with African printed fabrics as they divide up the resources of the continent amongst themselves. He was made a member of the British Empire, MBE, by Britain's Queen Elizabeth II in 2005. What is conceptual art? Conceptual art had existed in various forms for decades. But solidified into a major movement in the 1960s and 1970s. Inspired greatly by Dada and the art of Marcel Duchamp. Conceptual art is concerned with the intellectual process of art. The artist Sol Lewitt's 1967 article, Paragraphs on Conceptual Art, did much to explain the foundations of the movement, an idea alone can be a work of art. Conceptual art is extremely diverse and a large number of international artists are associated with it. Conceptual art can be anything from written documents to photographs, videos to performances. The work of Belgian artist Marcel Brutheers, 1924-1976, is a good example of conceptual art. Brutheers was a writer, filmmaker, and visual artist. Perhaps his most celebrated piece. Musée d'art moderne, Département de Eagles, Museum of Modern Art, Department of Eagles, 1968. Was an installation at his home in Brussels that described a completely fictitious museum. Besides the fact that Brutheers created posters, descriptions, and signs, the museum did not exist. The central idea of this piece was to question the authority of the museum as an institution. Conceptual art continues to be a major part of contemporary art today. Who is Cindy Sherman? Cindy Sherman, 1954, is a postmodern photographer known for her conceptual manipulations of media images and her use of self portraiture. Sherman's photographs explore feminine identity and question the way women are portrayed in art and popular culture. In her series untitled film stills, from the late 1970s and early 1980s. Sherman takes on the role of a female icon, a blonde bombshell such as Marilyn Monroe, and other stereotypical clichés. Her characters range from self-aware to subdued to comical. 
her later work takes on art history. In Untitled No. 224, Sherman becomes Bacchus, the ancient god of wine as imagined in the work of Baroque artist Caravaggio. Her eyes peering out from under a crown of grape leaves. Through her work, Cindy Sherman becomes the composite of the many images and film references she makes. Leading the viewer to question the reality or artificiality of not only the artist's identity, but of the way in which subjects are portrayed in art and popular culture. Where can I see art in my area? Art is all around us, especially if you are looking for it. Be sure to check out local galleries and museums, which usually have both permanent collections and temporary exhibitions that change regularly. Cafes, bookstores, and frame shops also often hang original art by local artists on the walls and sometimes have talks about art. These are great places to meet other people who are interested in art. Especially during the summer months. Arts and crafts fairs and festivals are frequently held in downtowns, parks, and fairgrounds. Search online or stop in at your local arts and crafts store, gallery, or cafe. Which might have some information on upcoming art events. I want to learn more. Who are the young British artists? The Young British Artists, YBAs, are a loosely affiliated group of contemporary artists working in London. Many of whom trained at London's Goldsmiths College in the late 1980s. Many of the Young British Artists gained the support of wealthy patrons. Such as advertising magnate and art collector Charles Saatchi. The young British artists included Damien Hirst, 1965, who curated a show of YBA work at a warehouse in 1988, putting the group on the map. Other members, such as Gary Hume and Fiona Ray, exhibited in this early show. While others Rachel Whiteread, 1963, and Tracy Emin, C. 1963, did not, but are also considered YBAs. The work of these artists is very diverse. Gary Hume and Fiona Ray are primarily painters. While White Reed and Emin are known for their conceptual sculpture and installations. What is post-painterly abstraction? The term post-painterly abstraction was coined by influential American art critic Clement Greenberg. 1909-1994, to describe abstract art inspired by but separate from American abstract expressionism. His term encapsulated multiple categories 242 of abstraction, including, but not limited to, hard edge painting and stain painting. Hard edge painting, 
as exemplified by the work of artists Frank Stella, 1936, and Ellsworth Kelly. 1923, is characterized by large geometric areas of color with absolutely no blending. Colors transition abruptly from one to the next, such as in Stella's Grand Cairo. 1962, a painting composed of a colorful series of ever smaller square outlines. The artist Helen Frankenthaler is known for championing the technique of staining the canvas with pure color. Also considered to be a form of post-painterly abstraction. Post-painterly abstraction emphasizes the formal qualities of painting, such as shape and color. Artists experimented with shaped canvas, transforming the painting into an object, or sculpture. Post-painterly abstraction lasted until the 1970s when postmodern artists began to challenge the supremacy of modernist critic Clement Greenberg. What is Fluxus? Fluxus is a difficult to describe, anti art movement, sometimes called Neo Dada. Promoted informally by an international group of artists who were interested in the relationship between art and life. The term Fluxus was invented in 1961 by the Lithuanian-American artist George Maciunas. The word itself comes from Latin and means to flow. Artists associated with Fluxus include, among others, Joseph Buys, 1921-1986, George Brecht, 1926-2008. Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, Yoko Ono, 1933, and Lamont Young, 1935. An experimental composer and performance artist. The artist Dick Higgins, 1938-1998, created a rubber stamp upon which he explained Fluxus as a way of doing things. A tradition, and a way of life and death, as quoted in Dempsey 229. Fluxus art was inherently collaborative. Artists work together to create pieces by sending art through the mail, for example. Collaborative Fluxus festivals or Flux concerts featured experimental music and other types of short. Fast-paced performances. Fluxus defies narrow. Description. It was intended to 244 be open, simple, and have a sense of humor. What is Internet art? Artists continually mine new technologies for possible artistic media. From acrylic paints to plastics, electronics to the World Wide Web. Internet art, or, net art, is a newly emerging form of digital art and can be interactive, collaborative, and accessible. Internet art is unique amongst art forms for its ability to reach a global audience in the click of a button. In 1995, the website Adaib was created as an online gallery hosting virtual art installations by established artists such as Felix Gonzalez Torres. 1957 to 1996 and Jenny Halzer 
1950, who exhibited her truisms on Adaib. Another example of net art includes Russian artist Olya Lyelina's interactive piece. My Boyfriend Came Back from the War, 1996, which tells a story by allowing site visitors to click on different hypertext links and GIFs, digital images in graphics interchange format. Internet art continues to expand, with many museums and galleries launching art websites. And new digital artists who explore the medium. Who is Jenny Halzer? Jenny Halzer, 1950, is a conceptual artist known for text-based installations and public displays. Her earliest work was Truisms, 1977-1979, which consisted of anonymous posters hung up around New York City with one-line phrases such as protect me from what I want. Abuse of power comes as no surprise, and expiring for love is beautiful but stupid. Along with displaying these truisms on posters. Halzer carved words into public benches, created t-shirts, hats, and more. Later in her career, she began to work with LED, light-emitting diode displays, which has garnered her much critical and popular success. For example, she created a 65-foot wide permanent LED display in the lobby of 7 World Trade Center in which text slowly scrolls. Halzer writes many of her own texts, and during her later career she began to appropriate language from international poets as well as text from unclassified U.S. documents, including interrogation transcripts from Abu Ghraib in Iraq. In this case, Halzer projects private words in a public space. Emphasizing the difference between private and public communication. Who is Mona Hatoum? Mona Hatoum, 1952, is a Palestinian video and installation. Artist who was raised in Lebanon and works primarily in Britain. Hatum's conceptual installations and performance pieces often communicate themes of exile and authority. Examples of her work include the minimalist Sokol du Monde, Base of the World, 1992-1993. A large black cube that contrasts a metallic interior structure with a softer, more organic exterior embellishment. Why did Damien Hirst preserve a tiger shark in formaldehyde solution? Damien Hirst's preserved shark piece might not mean much without its Title The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, 1991. Hearst, 1965, garnered early critical success as a member of the Young British Artists. And works in a variety of media, making paintings, prints, sculptures, and installations. Hearst's Pickled Shark, like much of his work, features dead animals. 
and is thematically focused on death, and the frailty or fragility of human existence. The once fierce and dynamic shark is now frozen. His dangerous teeth preserved in formaldehyde and kept under glass. A living, breathing beast is now as immobile and impersonal as any other example of ready-made pop art. Hearst's preserved shark has been criticized by many as a stunt. And by others who claim Hearst's work shouldn't even be considered art at all. But, Hearst has been very successful overall, both critically and financially. Earning millions of dollars for his pieces, as well as the prestigious British Turner Prize for Art in 1995. Is graffiti considered art? From a postmodern perspective, graffiti is as legitimate a form of visual expression as any form of fine art. Therefore an oil painting is no more valid than graffiti and both are considered art. Graffiti which is often associated with vandalism and the illicit painting or marking of public spaces. Has been part of painting for decades, if not longer. Artists such as Jackson Pollock and Jean Dubuffet, for example, incorporated graffiti-like markings into their work. In 1983, the first exhibition of graffiti art was held at Boymans van Buningen. Museum in Denmark a sign that graffiti was being accepted as a fine art. The artist Jean-Michel Bosquiat, 1960-1988, began his career in the late 1970s as a graffiti artist. Tagging buildings with short, poetic phrases, along with this friend, Al Diaz. The duo signed their work as Samo, same old shit. In the 1980s, Bosquiat developed a neo-expressionist style that incorporated graffiti elements. Explored experimental music, and exhibited his work in galleries in New York City and Los Angeles. Another artist, Keith Herring, 1958 to 1990, also began his career by using chalk and magic. Markers to draw his dynamic cartoon images in public spaces, such as New York metro stations. Both Bosquiat and Herring have achieved even greater success since their premature deaths. Bosquiat of a heroin overdose and Herring of AIDS. As graffiti art and street art have received increasing mainstream attention. Are there any good documentaries about art? There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of documentaries about art and artists. One of the best recent documentaries is Simon Shama's Power of Art, 2006, series. Which does an excellent, and very entertaining, job of explaining the work of famous artists throughout history from the Renaissance to the 20th century. The PBS series Art, 21 is unparalleled in its presentation of art in the 21st century. Each episode of Art, 21, which is organized by theme, provides a look into the minds. And usually the studios, of artists working today.
For a mix of Western and non-Western art, the series Art Through Time. A global view is also presented thematically, and includes information from art historians from around the world. It is often shown on local PBS stations. Check your local listings. Who was Eva Hesse? Eva Hesse, 1936-1970 was a German-American painter and sculptor whose Jewish family dramatically escaped Nazi Germany. Her highly experimental art is usually categorized as minimalist, however. Unlike many minimalists, narrative and personal history are an important part of her work. Her installation sculpture Rope Piece, 1969-1970, a tangled, Slightly frightening web of rope, string, and wire, has a different form each time it is moved to a new location. The piece has been described as a drawing in space. Her work Accession 2, 1968-1969, now at the Detroit Institute of Art, is a cube made of vinyl and steel. The cube is open at the top, revealing a lush layer of fiber-like tubes a reaction against the severity of much minimalist art. What is digital art? Digital art is art made by using digital technologies, such as a computer. Digital art is now more commonly referred to as new media art and can include two-dimensional images. Whether printed or not, made with software programs such as Adobe Photoshop, for example. Three-dimensional works or even multimedia works such as animations or videos made using computer software. Where I can I find art resources online? There are so many websites about art that looking up art online can turn into information overload. Here are a select few websites with a wealth of information on art. Presented in a straightforward and often entertaining way. Heilbronn Timeline of Art History at the Metropolitan Museum of New York http colon slash slash www.metmuseum.org slash toah this incredibly detailed site combines detailed explanations of art movements and styles with explanations of specific works of art held in the museum's collection it is a great resource for western and non-western art alike if you can't make it to new york Looking at the Met Museum's timeline of art history is the next best thing. Google Art Project, http colon slash slash www.googleartproject.com. A visit to Google Art Project is like stepping into a virtual museum. Roam the halls of the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles. The Uffizi Gallery in Florence, or the Tate Britain in London. Dozens of museums opened their doors to Google in 2011. Allowing cameras to film their interiors in a manner similar to Google Street View. 
after broadening the project's scope in 2012. Tens of thousands of works of art from around the world can be seen online through the Google Art Project. Smart History presented by the Khan Academy, HTTP slash slash smarthistory.conacademy.org slash Smart History is a great place to learn more about art movements and specific works of art. The site provides written essays, and video and audio guides to some of the most famous paintings, sculptures, and works of architecture around the world. Recently, Smart History has made an effort to include non-Western art. Smart History multimedia presentations are engaging and highly informative. What is the difference between Hiberno-Saxon art and Anglo-Saxon art? The term Hiberno-Saxon art refers to non-Christian, pagan, art produced after the fall of the Roman Empire by the Irish. Known as Hibernians, and the Anglo-Saxon peoples of southern England. While Anglo-Saxon art also refers to early medieval art of the British Isles. It is more closely associated with Christian themes and subject matter. Both of these terms are used by art historians when referring to art produced from around 600 to 1066. The date of the Norman conquest of Britain. What are some examples of postmodern art? Many postmodern art movements are described as neo movements because they respond to earlier modern styles or approaches. Here is a sampling. Neo-expressionism Neo-expressionism is primarily focused on painting. Though 252 some sculpture is considered neo-expressionist, and first began in Germany in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Neo-expressionist paintings are usually vibrant, sometimes figurative, but often raw and self-aware. Neo-expressionist artists include Anselm Kiefer, 1945, from Germany, and the American Julian Schnabel, 1951, whose large, brash paintings have been highly financially successful. Neo-geo neo-geometric conceptualism, or neo-geo, Developed in New York City in the mid-1980s and is characterized by postmodern appropriation and a strong sense of irony. Artists associated with Neo Geo include Peter Halley, 1953, and Ross Blecker, 1949, who brought new symbolic meaning to familiar modernist forms. Artists such as Ashley Bickerton. 1959, and Jeff Koons, 1955, are Neo Geo artists more interested in consumer culture. And their art is sometimes also categorized as post pop. Neo pop Neo pop is another term for post pop. An art movement that developed under the influence of pop art in the 1980s. Neo-pop artists include Heim Steinbach, 1944, Alan McCollum, 1949, Jeff Koons, 1955, Ashley Bickerton, 1959, and Takashi Murakami, 1961.
Neopop artists frequently use pre-existing, everyday objects. Also known as ready-mades, in their work and question the values of mainstream culture. What is idealization? Idealization is the attempt to depict physical perfection in art. For example, classical Greek sculpture, which features immaculately carved human figures, is usually thought of as one of the first traditions of naturalism in art history. Upon closer inspection, however, many examples of classical Greek sculpture look Overall, quite a bit better than average. Greek gods are depicted with defined muscles, broad shoulders, beautiful hair, and stoic faces. This is arguably similar to our contemporary cultures. Predilection for photoshopping models in glossy magazines. Idealization occurs in art from all over the world and different cultures emphasize different features in their attempts to achieve perfection. What is pre-Columbian art? Pre-Columbian art is a broad term given to the art of Mesoamerica, which includes Mexico and Central America, and South America before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. In 1492, it includes the art of large cultures such as the Maya, Aztecs, and Inca. What is art theory? Theories of art, or critical theories. Help us understand the meaning of art and culture from a philosophical perspective. Many artists use art to communicate philosophic opinions and ideas about art and culture through their work. While scholars and art historians use theory to put art and artists into cultural context, theorists are interested in looking beyond the superficial qualities of art and digging deep into questions of meaning and significance. Some, but definitely not all, important lines of theoretical questioning come from fields such as psychoanalysis. Marxism, feminism, and gender studies, post colonialism, and post modernism. What does it mean if a work of art is representational? A representational work of art is one that realistically depicts objects from the real world. For example, 17th century Dutch still lives are representational. As these paintings feature realistic images of everyday objects. What is Jasperware? Developed by the English potter Josiah Wedgwood, Jasperware is a type of porcelain best known for its popular white on blue. 
on glazed finish, though various other colors were also used, and neoclassical design. Wedgwood hired sculptor John Flaxman to recreate highly popular molded relief images that closely mimicked ancient Greek vase designs, which had been recently discovered. Jasperware was effectively marketed and manufactured on a large scale. Making Wedgwood's neoclassical designs available to a wider public than decorative objects made before the Industrial Revolution. Jasperware, and Wedgwood pottery as a whole, remain very popular to this day. What is graphic art? Graphic art is a loose term encompassing two-dimensional art such as drawing, painting, and printmaking, especially work that emphasizes line over color. Graphic art, a broad category, is not the same thing as graphic design, which relates to printed work that incorporates text and image. Who was by Cheddar? Vychitra was an important court painter active during the reign of Akbar the Great's son. Jahangir, who ruled from 1605 to 1627, as well as Shah Jahan, who built the Taj Mahal. Vychitra was a skilled miniature painter who was possibly raised by the court. Which is where he got his early education. He was interested in European painting and some of his work blends Indian landscapes with European perspective techniques. In his miniature painting, Jahangir preferring a Sufi to kings, see 1625, by Chitra included a small self-portrait among a group of other portraits of important figures such as Ottoman rulers and even King James I of England, which by Chitra likely copied from another portrait. The self-portrait shows the artist holding a small painting of himself, resulting in a painting within a painting. By Chitra bows respectfully to Jahangir, the Mughal ruler. Who were, some of, the Abstract Expressionists? Willem de Kooning, 1904-1997 De Kooning was a Dutch immigrant to America. Who greatly inspired the American artists he encountered in New York City. Considered part of the New York School of Abstract Expressionists. His work is characterized by aggressive brush strokes and partial abstraction. One of his most famous works is Woman I, 1950-1952, which he repeated a number of times. The painting depicts a large-eyed, aggressive woman with a wide, toothy smile and a wild, abstract form. The energy of de Kooning's work aligned the artist with action painters. And his work made a major impact on 20th century American modernism. Arshile Gorky, 1905-1948 Gorky was an Armenian-American painter whose early Cubist surrealist style influenced the abstract expressionists. 
his painting Garden in Saatchi, c. 1943. Shares similarities with the biomorphic abstraction of Henry Moore. Hans Hoffmann, 1880-1966 born in Germany. Hoffmann was an art teacher who introduced a new American generation to European modernism. His work, as exemplified in The Gate, 1959-1960, is bold and colorful. And emphasizes visual structure and color relationships. Franz Klein, 1910 to 1962 Klein's work was large and he is particularly well known for his white canvases slashed with aggressive black brush strokes these works evoke Chinese calligraphy and draw attention to the dynamic power and structural qualities of the brush stroke Robert Motherwell 1915 to 1991 Motherwell was a member of the New York school and was inspired by surrealist automatism and European modernism. He was a writer and a teacher and had an intellectual approach to abstraction. He painted the series Elegies to the Spanish Republic throughout his long career. These works served as philosophical mediations on the nature of loss, death, and visual form. Lee Krasner, 1911-1984 Lee Krasner was an important abstract expressionist painter and the wife of Jackson Pollock. She was highly critical of her own work, even occasionally destroying finished pieces. She produced large, gestural paintings such as The Seasons, 1957. Barnett Newman, 1905-1970 Newman was an important color field painter whose work often features a zip or long, thin, vertical line of color painted against a boldly colored background. Newman's zip has been likened to an obelisk. Newman searched for the sublime through overwhelming fields of pure color. Jackson Pollock, 1912-1956 Pollock is one of the most enduringly popular abstract expressionists. Known for his aggressive painting style and technique of splattering paint directly onto the canvas. He laid his paintings flat on the ground, and walked over them with back bent, applying paint directly. While it seems like his paintings would be chaotic, their overall effect is often rhythmic and contemplative. Add Reinhardt, 1913 to 1967 Reinhardt was known for making art as art and emphasizing the separation between art and life. He distilled his paintings to a single color and his later paintings are completely black. With no trace of a brush stroke. This was done in an attempt to completely separate the work from the act of its creation. Mark Rothko, 1903-1970 Rothko was interested in emotional and spiritual communication in his large color field paintings. The monumental canvases of Mark Rothko feature soft edge areas of rich color where different hues never quite touch one another. Creating a tension Rothko linked to tension within human relations. Rothko's paintings are infused with spirituality and psychological ambiguity. Clifford Still, 1904-1980 Still was also a color field painter. Though his works are more aggressive than Rothko's due to jagged areas of color, varied textures, and juxtaposed hues. 
his massive paintings have been equated with landscapes. Helen Frankenthaler, 1928-2011 though she used oil and acrylic paint. Frankenthaler's large paintings have the look of watercolor, with stained canvas and large areas of fluid color. Staining produces an almost textureless open space within the canvas that garnered her the support of modernist critic, Clement Greenberg. What is a ready-made? A ready-made is an artistic concept that describes an existing functional object that no longer serves its intended purpose and that is instead considered for only its aesthetic value. The best example of a ready-made is Marcel Duchamp's Fountain. 1917, a porcelain urinal Duchamp signed as R. Mutt and submitted as a work of art for an exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists in New York. When Duchamp changed, or augmented, a pre-existing object, he called the work ready-made aided. The act of signing the urinal can be considered such a change. But a more complex example can be seen in Duchamp's LHOOQ, 1919. For this work, Duchamp took a found object, or a pre-existing object, in this case, a postcard of the Mona Lisa, upon which he drew a mustache. This act of aesthetic vandalism serves to question the authority of art history and the preeminence of so-called fine art. Duchamp's interest in ready-mades reflects Dada provocatism, humor, and irreverence. The concept influenced later artists such as Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg, and Andy Warhol. All artists who manipulated pre-existing images in their work to communicate new meanings. What is the difference between Theravada Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism? Theravada Buddhism is the earliest form of the religion and is called the Path of the Elders. It is most popular in India, Sri Lanka, and parts of mainland Southeast Asia. Mahayana Buddhism is the second important school of Buddhism and is known as the Great Path. Mahayana Buddhists worship bodhisattvas, compassionate Buddhists to be who understand the path to enlightenment and devote themselves to teaching others who to achieve nirvana. Mahayana Buddhism is popular in northern India, China, Japan, Korea, and Nepal. What is the Gupta style? Associated with art produced during the reign of Gupta rulers, who ruled in eastern India from c. 320 to 450 CE, the Gupta style is characterized by naturalistic. Though idealized, images of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in both painting and sculpture. A great example of the Gupta style is the wall painting of the Bodhisattva known as the beautiful Padmapani, painted in the late 5th century. Padmapani is shown as serene and relaxed, withdrawn from the material world swirling around him. 
strong outlines emphasize the form of the figure. But the rest of the body is smooth and anatomically undefined. With downcast eyes, the painting exhibits the Gupta emphasis on naturalism. Balance, and spiritual detachment. What is the difference between Art Nouveau and Art Deco? Art Nouveau and Art Deco were both design movements that flourished in the early 20th century. Art Nouveau was established before Art Deco, and even influenced it. Art Nouveau designs tend to be busier and more ornate, with curving, organic lines. Art Nouveau artists include Alphonse Mucha and Theophile Alexander Steinlin. The designer of the still popular Tourney du Chat Noir posters. Art Deco is also ornamental, however. It tends to be more geometric due to the influence of Cubism and Futurism. Art Deco was popular during the Great Depression, the Empire State Building. Completed in 1931, is an example of Art Deco architecture as are many of. The jewelry designs of Georges Fouquet and many poster designs of the era. What is the Queen Mother Pendant Mask? The Queen Mother Pendant Mask likely represents Idia, the mother of Oba Isaji, who ruled Benin between 1504 and 1550. Nearly 10 inches tall, it is made of carved ivory and was meant to be worn at the hip. The face of Idia is skillfully carved in a highly naturalistic style, with powerful eyes and stylized hair. Along the top and bottom of the mask are carved images of Portuguese soldiers, with whom Benin had an amicable trade relationship. The solider images alternate with images of the mudfish, which was symbolic of wealth, creativity, and the sea. A second, nearly identical, pendant mask was also carved from the same piece of ivory. One is in the British Museum while the other is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. What is abstraction? Artists interested in abstraction are not concerned with accurately representing the visual world in their work. While some abstract artists distort the real world, other abstract artists are purely expressive and do not refer to the real world at all. Abstract art is sometimes referred to as non representational art. Piet Mondrian was a 20th century Dutch painter who pioneered abstraction in an art movement called De Stijl. Mondrian is famous for his paintings containing simple, balanced, geometric forms using a limited color palette. What is Schroeder House? Designed by Dutch architect Gerrit Rietveld, 
1888-1964. Schroeder House is an example of vestigial architecture. In a way, Schroeder House, built in Utrecht in the Netherlands is like a three-dimensional Mondrian painting with a geometric interior and exterior. A simplified color palette of neutral and primary colors, and specially designed furniture. The house also features large, rectangular windows and an open floor plan with sliding wall partitions. Which emphasize horizontal and vertical lines. The design for Schroeder House inspired a style of architecture known as the International Style. Are there any good documentaries about art? There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of documentaries about art and artists. One of the best recent documentaries is Simon Shama's Power of Art, 2006, series. Which does an excellent, and very entertaining, job of explaining the work of famous artists throughout history from the Renaissance to the 20th century. The PBS series Art, 21 is unparalleled in its presentation of art in the 21st century. Each episode of Art, 21, which is organized by theme, provides a look into the minds, and usually the studios, of artists working today. For a mix of Western and non-Western art, the series Art Through Time. A global view is also presented thematically, and includes information from art historians from around the world. It is often shown on local PBS stations. Check your local listings. What innovations were made by Euphranius? Active in Athens between 520 and 470 B. C. E. Euphronius was a vase painter who worked in the red figure style. The red figure style of ancient Greek vase painting developed. After the black figure style used by artists such as Exequius. Euphronius' work demonstrates a masterful ability to use the red figure technique to naturalistically depict the human form in multiple poses. Euphronius signed 18 of his vases, sometimes as a painter, and sometimes as the potter. One of his most famous works is a bowl like calyx crater depicting the death of Sarpedon. C 515 BCE. The story comes from Homer's Iliad and the painting shows the deities Hypnos and then Eidos. Gods of sleep and death, respectively, carrying the dead body of the warrior Sarpedon. Hermes, the messenger god, holds a staff decorated with snakes called a caduceus, and wears a winged hat. Hermes watches over the scene and ensures the safe arrival of Sarpedon's body in the underworld. The figures in the dignified and detailed scene were rendered using foreshortening. An innovative technique in which body forms are distorted so that they appear to recede from the viewer. Which creates 48 a sense of real space in the painting. Who was Jacob van Roysdal?
During the 17th century, landscape paintings became very popular in the Netherlands and other parts of Europe. And Jacob van Ruisdael, 1628-1682, was a leading landscape painter of the time. His landscapes are often dark and moody. And he preferred woodland scenes and coastal views populated with shadowy architectural structures. Examples of his expressive landscapes include the Jewish Cemetery, 1655-1660, Bentheim Castle, c. 1650, and Windmill at Wicht Bijt to Ersted, 1660. What is El Escorial? El Escorial is an enormous monastery palace built by Spanish King Philip II in Madrid between 1563 and 1584 Philip II took over control of Spain after his father, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, abdicated. Philip was therefore one of the most powerful rulers in Europe. Controlling territories in Spain, the Netherlands, Milan, Burgundy, Naples, and even the Americas. Philip II was a devout Catholic and El Escorial combined a seminary, convent, and basilica with the royal palace. The main architect was Juan Bautista de Toledo until his death. When Juan de Herrera took over, eventually completing the project. The building design is reminiscent of Italian classicism. But it is formidable and severe, reflecting the power of the Spanish crown. <laughs> 